Hi, I'm Scott Moore with Northway Solutions Group, and I'm talking about Virtual User Generator, or VUGen, in LoadRunner. Uh, this is a scripting tool, version 11, SP4. Web Protocol. We're in the recording options, and we recently went through the first three that you see, script, protocols, and recording. And now we're going to go into the rest of them. For port mapping, you know, this is the, the default uh, socket level data. Win INET data is more of a, uh, an older uh, IE only type way of hooking in and grabbing traffic. Uh, I've never really had to add uh, additional entries in for port mapping, but depending on your application, if you're trying to deal with traffic outside of port 80, 443, and some other type hybrid applications, um, you may have to dig into this at some point in time. Um, and if you're de having to deal with, you know, issues with uh, secure sockets layer, uh, anything like that, you're going to want to basically bring this to the attention of the developers or the technical team uh, that would know uh, what you'd have to do to make this this work because sometimes there are security issues. I do know the one thing I will mention because I've sort of got a story around this is uh, with socket and when inet level data when I had that set that way all the time um, I had an issue on my machine where my socket libraries the DLLs that control Windows sockets on my machine got corrupted and I never knew it uh, and I had this set this way, and the whole time I'm capturing uh, web things for probably a few months, I was capturing everything through when I and that data, which was not necessarily a problem on the applications I was using until I needed to get into a socket level protocol and nothing would work. And uh, one thing that got affected by that when your sockets um, get um, go bad, I guess, in Windows, if you want to say it that way, if they get corrupted, the protocol advisor will will not work correctly. When you go to analyze a particular uh, application or, or, or website or something and you're trying to figure out are there more things besides uh, HTTP traffic that I should be concerned with, if your sockets are messed up it won't capture or it, won't, it will only recommend COM um, and, and sockets and those are the, the only protocols that it recommends that you actually choose. Um, it, it won't grab other uh, other recommendations at a higher level. Um, I do have a, a blog article out there. Uh, it's an older one, blog.northwaysolutions.com. If you look up um, sockets, uh, you'll actually see play-by-play uh, -play what happened and what I did to fix it. And Microsoft actually has a uh, an automated style fix where you basically double click on an executable and it walks you through the correction uh, of sockets uh, libraries that go bad. Um, these options here, I typically keep um, un uh, at default unless there's some specific reason um, why I would need to change them. Uh, saving snapshot resources locally uh, is always a good idea. Um, it, it creates them quicker if you do it that way. Um, I would only add this if there was a need to add a web bridge find. If you don't know what a web, web bridge find is, you need to read the function reference guide. But it will basically find, uh, put a web reg a registration function that finds information in the next step that it submits. And it will do that for all of the uh, page titles. So where you open up a web page and you see um, in the title up above, like here, you'll see this beyond compare. If you're looking for a specific text in there, it will automatically generate those for you uh, during recording. It will also uh, add comments um, to the script for each request that generates something in the 400, 500 range. Um, and then if you need to support different character sets, if you're in a different country, um, you can set that here. This recording uh, script uh, for er an earlier engine uh, came about around LoadRunner version 8. Um, they modified the hooking engine at that time. So if you wanted to use the version 7.5 or 7 or earlier to hook into an older uh, website, if that worked better for you, um, when we were around LoadRunner version 8, Feature Pack 4, uh, sometimes you would need to switch between the two, but at this point, I believe they've got that engine worked out now. Uh, I'm not sure why that's still in there and probably will be going away very soon.
if there are specific headers, specific content types, or specific resources that you need to filter out other than what's defaulted, you can change them here. I very rarely run into a situation where I need to do that. Let's talk, uh, this is pretty important, about the correlation engine. Um, I turn that off if I'm not going to use it. Um, but if you did need to enable it, it's good to understand what this correlation engine does. So if you're recording a specific application like Siebel, where there's a lot of correlation that needs to be done, you can begin to set up rules so that VUGen will get smarter about taking care of that while it's recording because it will detect certain patterns, uh, certain boundaries, left and right boundaries, and begin to capture those as web reg save param functions. Don't know what a web reg save param function is? You need to read the function reference guide. Uh, but this will add those during recording. The smarter um, well, I will, I'll put it this way. The more of these rules that you put in as you record applications, let's say uh, you're a performance engineer and you work on a few large applications throughout the year that you record all the time. You're always running tests on them. You're always writing new scripts. You probably have detected patterns in your web red save params. If you begin to put those in there and create sort of a library of rules in here, it does all the heavy lifting for you. It doesn't mean it's going to totally eliminate all your correlation for you, but as you begin to understand left and right boundaries for tracking state you know, and statuses, um, you can begin to put those in here, create your own set of libraries, and then recording then becomes much faster because of the, uh, the correlation engine. So I highly recommend that you do use this and learn how to use it. Um, just for kicks, I'm going to um, import a set of new rules here for view states because um, when you're working on applications and you're sharing scripts with other load testing uh, engineers that are also scripting, you might create your own library in here, uh, which is pretty easy to do, but then you, you can export them out as .cor files, put them somewhere where they can be shared, and then you can import them into this from somewhere else. So if, if somebody else had already created this library about view states for uh, .NET ASP X applications, um, we've got one for view state and then we've got one for uh, ampersand quote, right? So if you were trying to find a particular GUID and that's where that showed up was in between those specific left and right boundaries or you're looking for a specific view state number, it'll go ahead and capture those for you so that you don't have to do that. And you can get really fancy with XPath and matching specific case. Um, it's really easy to create your own application in here. Call it whatever you're scripting today. So we'll call this test and we'll create a new rule and we'll call that um, Scott1 and then you begin to put your left and right boundary and now you've got a rule. So that's that's how easy it is. Obviously you just look through your script and find your web red save params and what you would need and then you would go from there. And then if I want to export that out um, I can just select just that one or all of them click export and I can see I can save that as a correlation file. So this is a pretty cool feature of LoadRunner and um, while we're, we're, we're almost out of time, but I'll talk about this data format extension. So this is for sites where you're recording uh, AJAX heavy sites or sites that have a lot of XML in them. Uh, if you've got JSON based sites, so if you don't understand what JSON is, um, my understanding at a high level is it's sort of like uh, the new XML. It's like, like transferring data like you would in XML, but you're doing it through a sub uh, language of JavaScript. Um, this is a way so that you can take that JavaScript information in JSON and convert it to XML so you can get a clean view within VUGen. And I've got a slide here that I'm going to show you very briefly. Um, it just uh, This feature allows conversion between different formats. It's a common format now that VUGen can understand for correlation. It supports these options, XML, JSON, Base64, URL encoding, etc. It's turned off by default. You turn it on, um, and once you turn it on and set the options correctly, then you'll go from seeing this in your recording snapshot to this in your recording snapshot, which will make it much easier for you to use things like um, the XML-based uh, parsing right uh, for where it's at in the actual tree 
in the X-Path, if you will. So uh, I know that was very fast. Um, I, I actually did create um, one of these um, and set the options and it will grab certain JSON requests from my application and here's how I'd set it to record uh, from the body. So if you're do, using JSON or you're using those types uh, and you need to have that conversion so you can get that type of view, again, this type of view uh, when you're viewing it uh, in ViewGen, that's how you would do it. So those are the basic recording options for uh, the HTTP protocol. We can be found on the web at NorthwaySolutions.com. We have a blog where we're putting out a lot of the UGEN code and LoadRunner based information, tips and tricks at blog.NorthwaySolutions.com. I'm Scott Moore. Your feedback is always welcome and I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.